I've put my first piece of bench top in, and because we're working in an old house, the walls are all in and out. So what we're going to have to do is scribe a line to suit the profile of the wall. Let's make sure the bench top goes back parallel. 35. Let's come down here. 35. This is exactly the same process we used when we trimmed the end panel to match our out of level floor. In this case our wall is only a few millimetres out of true, so just holding our pencil flat against the wall will mark the bench top far enough out to cover those few mil. Just slide it along and there's your line. Now I'm just going to shave that off using an electric plane. My bench tops are in and now I've made all my adjustments, now it's time to cut out a hole for our sink. Now I've got my template sitting down. There's a couple of things you should watch out for before cutting out your bench top. Make sure our bowl sits within the framework of our cabinetry. We have to have a minimum of 55 millimeters left on our bench top from our cut mark. I'm just going to throw a little bit of masking tape just to hold the bowl pattern in position. Now we can mark around with our pencil. Good heavy line. Now put some masking tape over the line. This prevents the laminate from chipping when I use the jigsaw to cut it out. Lift the section of bench top off before you start cutting the hole out for the sink so there's no chance of cutting into what's underneath. We're going to drill a starter hole for the jigsaw. Now we're just about to fit our bench top in permanently. Before we do that, we're going to use these brackets to fit the bench top to the back of the cabinetry. I'm now going to start by gluing our two sections of bench top. So just very carefully, spread this on either side of our join. Don't worry about putting too much on, we can always take that off later. Very gently lower our bench into position. Get underneath the bench and put in our bench connectors. Come up on top to have a look to see how it's going. It's going to give it a wee little tickle up where it's just sitting up a little bit there. That's looking good. So I go back underneath, tighten that up. Once that's all done, all we have to do is come up and clean it up. Now run silicon around the outside edge of your sink and slip it into place through the bench top. Then use these tabs around the underside edge to lock it down and seal it against the bench top. Clean off the excess silicon and away you go. We're now ready to throw on our wall unit. I've located exactly where my studs are on the wall and I've transferred all those measurements onto my cabinet. I've pre-drilled the holes and I've got my screws in there ready to go. I've also cut some blocks to the right length. So all I have to do is take my cabinet, sit it on the blocks and put the screws in. Time to throw on our hinges. We've got two parts to our hinges. I'm going to put the first part on our cabinetry. These are very, very simple. All we have to do is screw in our pre-drilled holes in the units. Second part to our hinge is the piece that goes on the door. All we have to do is put the screws in our pre-drill holes. Now we clip our doors in. Now with a standard flat pack kitchen, the holes are already drilled three quarters of the way through for a standard handle. However, if you do decide to choose a larger handle, you'd have to drill these through yourself. Time to throw on our toe kicks. Because we're working in an old house, I've put the level down and as you can see the floor is not level. So what I'm going to do is individually measure each end of the cabinet tree and transfer those marks onto my toe kick. Now mark our two points, I'll take that outside and cut it. I've cut my toe kick, now I'm going to mark exactly where our feet are. Now these clips hold our toe kicks into place. It's going to slide our clip into the holder. Okay now we're ready to clip our toe kick on. Now the bench tops are made to measure, but the cabinets on these flat pack kitchens are modular units. Chances are they're not going to perfectly match your kitchen dimensions. That's why every flat pack kitchen comes with one of these, a filler panel. If the overall length of your cabinetry is a little bit short, all you have to do is just trim this filler panel to size for a perfect finish. All our doors are on, time for final adjustment. As you can see, the doors are not level. The great thing about these hinges, they're fully adjustable. Righto, the traders have been back, connected everything. Everything's in, new paint, new lino. Now all we have to do is give it a good wipe down, a silicon seal around the edges of the wall and floor. We're going to help ourselves out with a little bit of masking tape. I'm going to keep that about three millimetres off the wall. One of the little tips when putting on silicon, always keep a good clean nozzle. Now what I'm using here is a silicon sealer applicator. This helps us smooth the silicon out without getting our dirty little fingers in there. 
This is what it looked like before. And this is how it looks now. Not too bad, is it? Like I said at the beginning, there is a bit of organising involved with installing your own kitchen, but just follow these steps and you'll be able to put it all together easy as. So bring your ideas into store and we'll sort you out with everything you need to get the job done. Might attend, make a DIY easy as.